Jesus should depart from iniquity. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19 he says, Nevertheless the foundation of God stands sure, having this seal. The Lord knows them that are his. And let everyone that names the name of, of Christ depart from iniquity. Fourth is the blood of Jesus Christ. The, fo- the fourth weapon is the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ is another added weapon to fight against the kingdom of darkness. As it is written in the book of Revelation, when referring to Satan being overcome by believers through the blood of Jesus, Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, he says, And they overcome and they overcame by the blood of the Lamb. In other words, here, the blood of Jesus. For John the Baptist, when he saw Jesus, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. For it is sin that gives power to the kingdom of darkness over people but if one believes in christ jesus and now lives a life of holiness his sins have been washed away by the blood of jesus and satan and the kingdom of darkness have no more power over such person matthew chapter 26 verse 28 says for this is my blood this is jesus speaking this is for this is my blood of the new covenant of the new testament which is shared for many for the remission of sins. That is why the word of God says the following in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. What is more about the blood of Jesus is the fact that it has the life or it contains the life of jesus christ himself for it is in the blood that life is found hence the blood of jesus as in the blood of jesus is found the life of jesus christ leviticus chapter 17 verse 11 says for the life of the flesh is in the blood and i have given it to you upon the altar to make an an atonement for your souls for it is the blood that makes an, an, an atonement for the soul so when you use the blood of Jesus Christ by faith, the enemy cannot strike you with death. For in the blood of Jesus is found the life of Jesus Christ himself. Hence, Jesus say in John chapter 10 verse 10, he said, The thief, referring to the devil, the thief comes not but to, for to steal and to kill and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly in order to when jesus when you had just when you call upon his blood it impact upon you the life of jesus that you cannot be you cannot be stricken with 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 with, with, um, with, 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 with death death has no more hold over you because the blood of jesus has the life of Jesus itself. He imparts life in you. And if you cover yourself with the blood of Jesus, hence you are covering yourself with the life of Jesus Christ. And because there is no association between Jesus Christ and whatsoever belongs to the kingdom of darkness, for Jesus is light, hence the forces of darkness cannot God cannot get hold of you. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 to 16 to, to 15, the middle of the verses. It says, the end of verse 14, it says, And what communion has light with darkness? The first, beginning of verse 15, it says, And what concord has Christ with Belial? So, the other weapons are the fire and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. The fire of the Holy Spirit is very disastrous for the forces of darkness. As it consumes him, it consumes them. Hence, the word of God says in Hebrew chapter 12, verse 29, it says, For our God is a consuming fire. So when you call upon the blood of Jesus, powers of darkness are consumed all over. When you call upon the fire of the Holy Ghost, and with the anointing of the Holy Spirit, God enables the believer, uh, enables believer to break the yoke of the kingdom of darkness. It can be the yoke of sickness, or the yoke of poverty, or the yoke of witchcraft, or whatsoever yoke. 
it will be broken because of the anointing of the Holy Ghost, of the Holy Spirit. Isaiah chapter 10 verse 27. And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden shall be taken away from off your shoulder and his yoke from off your neck. And the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. So the anointing of the Holy Spirit is there to break the yoke of darkness. So whatever yoke of the forces of darkness, of the kingdom of darkness that has been laid around you, you can break it by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So use that anointing. Call upon the anointing of the Holy Spirit to break that yoke. And again, you need to understand that all these weapons are that God has supplied to human beings are spiritual weapons which can only be accessed by you or and used by faith through prayer. The faith is the tool that enables you to during your prayer to God to make use of these weapons. And having the best weapons is not enough to win a war, but you need also the best strategy for the war at hand. In other terms, you need also wisdom to win wars. Hence, King Solomon wrote in Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 13 to 18, he says, This wisdom have I seen also under the sun. It seemed great unto me. There was a little city, a few men within it, and there came a great king against it, and besieged it, and built great bulk works, against it now there was found in it a poor wise man and he by his wisdom delivered the city yet no man remembered that same poor man then said i wisdom is better than strength nevertheless the poor man's wisdom is despised and his words are not heard the words of wise men are heard in quiet more than the cry of him that rules among fools. Wisdom is better than weapons of war, but one sinner destroys much good. Some strategies in spiritual warfare. First, have strong and proper foundation have strong and proper foundations for every proper structure must have good foundations as the word of god says in psalm 11 verse 3 if the foundation be destroyed what can the righteous do in other term if you do you you do not have foundations as a believer you cannot stand you will be destroyed you need to have a certain routine and discipline which will be as your foundation as a believer. So the first routine or discipline is read the word of God or meditate the word of God at least twice a day, at least twice a day to keep your faith alive and to make it stronger for faith comes by hearing the word of God. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 he says so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth but you shall meditate therein day and night day and night I mean twice day at least twice a day day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein for then you shall make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. Second routine or discipline, have at least two to three substantial times of devotion every day to pray unto God. For prayer makes your spirit to dominate over the evil desires of your corrupt human nature. This is also known as the flesh, your flesh. Matthew chapter 26 verse 41, says jesus speaking say watch and pray that you enter not into temptation the spirit indeed is willing but the flesh is weak galatians chapter 5 verse 16 he says then i say uh, then i say this i say then walk 
in the spirit, in the word, in the Holy Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Third routine or a dis or discipline: fast at least once a week, at least once a week, if not twice. Also, to make sure that your spirit is and remain stronger over your flesh in other words so that your spirit dominates keeps on dominating bringing to your bringing your your flesh unto subjection silencing the desires of your flesh having this daily and weekly routine and discipline of prayer meditation of the word of god and fasting will make sure that you have a strong and proper foundation as foundations of as a believer and moreover make sure that you have the word of god as your ultimate guide for living on this earth thus making it your foundation in life by living according to it this is why jesus christ said in say the following in matthew chapter 7 verse 24 to 27 therefore whosoever hears these sayings of mine and does them i will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not for it was founded upon a rock and everyone that hears these sayings of mine and does them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand and the rain descended and the flood came and the winds blew and beat upon the that house and he fell and great was the fall of it another strategy know your opponent your enemy will try to destroy your foundations so that he can destroy you even as we have read in Psalm 11 verse 3 which says if the foundation be destroyed what can the righteous do so he needs first to destroy your routine destroy your foundation as a believer before he can get into you before he can destroy you so therefore Satan has, has, has put in place several strategies in order to destroy your foundation as a believer so that he can destroy you I'm just giving some few strategies. The cell phone and the internet. Satan has thus put in place cell phones and internet to distract people so that they will so much be busy. They will so much be busy with them. To the point that they will no longer have enough time to pray or read or meditate the word of God. And as a result, believers will become spiritually weak. If you take the keypad, the keypad of any cell phone, even some computers, and check the alignment of the digital numbers, adding them horizontally, respectively, it will give you 6666, which is the mark of the beast, even as outlined in Revelation chapter 13, verse 16 to 18, to say that the cell phone operates through the mark of the beast you have upon the keypad you have the first line you will have the digit seven eight nine and then if you add seven plus eight plus nine it gives you 24 20 in 24 you have the digit two and four if you add two plus four it gives you six this is the first six the second line you have the digits four five and six if you add four plus five plus six it gives you 15 and if you in the 15 you have two the digits one and six if you add one plus six it give, uh, you have the digit one and five sorry if you add one plus five it gives you six then you have the second six and the third line you have the digit one two and three switch if you add one plus two plus three it gives you six that gives you the third six therefore if you read it it gives you what six hundred and sixty six which is the mark of the beast to say that the cell phone 
operate through the mark of the beast. The internet also works with the mark of the beast. For every web address starts with www. Whether you start by tapping it or not, it is automatically incorporated in the address web. But W is the 23rd letter of the alphabet. Hence, W represents the number 23. And if you do the product of the two digits, in other words, if you multiply 2 times by 2 by 3, so 2 times 3, it gives you a 6. So because you have W three times, so you will have 6, 6, and 6, which is 666, which is the mark of the beast again. Not that this is no, this does not mean that you have to throw your cell phone or not use the internet anymore, but pray so that you do not become addicted to them and that you use them only when it is necessary. You will observe something, people are become so much addicted to the cell phone and to the internet that a, they cannot spend even three minutes without looking, some of them even three minutes without looking into the cell phones. Always on social media, always doing this. And it takes so much of their daily time and reduces the time of devotion with God. They, they, that they even forget to pray. They forget to meditate the word of God. They become spiritually weak at the end of the day. Another strategy is called human transfer. Saturn has realized that when a person remains zealous for the things of God, he grows despite the attacks of the kingdom of darkness. The Saturn said that they will create a transfer for that person that is a trip or a mutation for work reasons. You know, from his current from his current place to another place whereby the person will find himself in an environment where his spiritual growth will no longer be possible. For instance, a Christian may find himself working in a certain company and he's excelling spiritually. In other words, he's growing spiritually because of the things around him. He's got his church, he's got the, the, his brother and, and, and sister in the faith and all these things. But if the manager or the boss is an unbeliever, Satan will enter in the manager and Satan will and Satan through the manager will transfer the Christian to another service, perhaps another city, making sure that the environment will no longer be proper for the spiritual growth of the Christian. For instance, there is no church in the area or is surrounded with unpleasant colleagues and he can Satan can even transfer him, that person to a Muslim country where meetings of Christians are prohibited etc and sometimes the salary will be very high so that the person is determined to go but will in fact it, it will be in fact a trap because the consequence will be that the spiritual life of the person will retro, retro uh, which will, will backslide drastically after a certain time Saturn said that they will do all things so that the person find himself in Egypt, in other words, in the spiritual Egypt, like the people of Israel in the time of Moses, you know, when they were in slavery in Egypt, but under the domination of Pharaoh, so as the people of Israel, so, and there they will take the person in charge, the person who will be well paid, and all his need, material, will be taken care of. But the company will tell him that he is not allowed to serve or pray in to serve God or pray in the sight. Or the person will be overloaded with so much work that it, it does not find time to serve God as the person will be working, for instance, seven days a week, seven days a week. 
So these are some of the strategies that the enemy put in place. So avoid also opening doors to the forces of darkness to strike your life by committing sin. For instance, by getting angry, you are actually causing the protection of God to be removed from you, thus leaving you vulnerable to any attack by the forces of darkness. Proverbs chapter 25 verse 28, which says, He that has no rule over his own spirit is like a city, in other words, who gets easily angry, is like a city that is broken down and without walls. So if a city has no walls, it means that is eligible for any kind of attack, is exposed to any kind of attack. So when you get easily angry, you are, are exposed to any kind of attack. So these are some few strategies that you can put in place. Make sure that you discern when the enemy is operating. Make sure you don't open doors by committing any kind of sin. If ever you have made a mistake by committing sin, repent immediately. Make sure that you have a proper discipline, routine in meditating the word of God, prayer on a daily basis, fasting on a weekly basis. Know and understand the word of God. Some of the verses that you see as key, memorize them so that you can pray with them. Use the spiritual weapons, the spiritual assets that God has given you. And conquer in the battlefield against the forces of darkness. In the name of Jesus, so let us pray. Let us first pray to thank God. In the name of Jesus Christ for his word. Let's pray also to ask God in the name of Jesus Christ to make every human being to have strong and proper foundation in life in Christ Jesus. Let's pray in the name of Jesus Christ to ask God to cause every human being to know and understand the different weapons that God has availed to mankind to fight against the forces of darkness. And that everyone makes good use of these weapons. Pray for God to make every human being to know the various tricks of Satan so that people no longer fall into them in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray for every woman to portray truly what God has intended her to be in every aspect of life in the name of Jesus. Pray for God to make all human beings to unite against the forces of darkness in Jesus name. And finally let us pray to thank God for answering to our prayers. So let us bow our head and join me with in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we bless you, we glorify you, we exalt you, we elevate you, and we thank you for this time, for this word, for empowering us with understanding, revelation, knowledge, in the name of Jesus, for equipping us, Almighty God, with divine truth, in Jesus' name. We ask for your grace, your mercy, O God, upon every human being, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, let every human being, O oh God, have strong and proper foundation in Christ Jesus. Let them have, O oh God, proper foundations as believers in the name of Jesus Christ. Let us, O oh God, have routine, daily routine. O oh God, at least that we meditate your word twice a day at least. And at least twice to three, to the, to twice or th uh, thrice a time, a substantial time of devotion in your praises, in prayer, in prayer, and have weekly fasting at least once every week. We fast in the name of Jesus Christ. Help us, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, to live, to have your word as a standard of living, that we live by it it in practice every single day of our life on this earth in the name of Jesus Christ we pray and we ask you let every human being take these weapons that you have available to mankind unto human beings 
and use, know them very well and use them properly. Handle them in the name of Jesus Christ. Make, oh God, human beings raise them. Now me on this earth. Haven't you said, I will build my church and no gate of hell shall prevail against it. Build your church, build your army, oh God, in the name of Jesus Christ. And let no power of darkness, let no gate of hell prevail against it. But dismantle all the, oh God, forces of darkness, all the works of darkness in the name of Jesus through your armies, oh God. Be the commander, Jesus, of your army. Lead your army in the battlefield and give us great victory for you say with you we shall make export and you say if we be if, if God be for us who can be against us we thank you God for giving us discernment that we may know the tricks of the enemy and not fall into them you say the wise oh God the prudent man sees evil from far and and, 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 and get away from it in the name of Jesus let every who every woman portray truly what you have intended her to be in every aspect of life and that it may not be an instrument to marry God of deterioration of the kingdom of darkness let them also receive that eternal life in Jesus Christ's name Father, we thank you. We ask you to unite every, all human beings to fight the forces of darkness. Let every human being come to this awareness, this knowledge and understanding and unite in this fight against the forces of darkness in the name of Jesus and give us great victories. In the name of Jesus, let now this war, let people now, oh God, take serious this war against the forces of darkness. For Satan and all the other fallen angels have been serious against mankind to destroy mankind. Oh God, let it not happen. Now let mankind raise in power in God in the name of Jesus Christ and conquer and conquer for you say we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us let it be so in the name of Jesus Christ we thank you we bless you we glorify you in Jesus Christ that we pray amen be blessed